So it's it's encouraging after then when you're like I, I can still do this. It's just gonna look a little different. So my name is Jessie Lamb, and I'm a personal trainer. I'm a yoga instructor and a holistic nutritionist. I'm also a mom to a four-year-old girl named Harley and a six-year-old dog named Loki. I've been in the fitness industry for over 20 years now and full-time in the industry for about eight years. So what I love about fitness is on a personal level, it makes me feel really strong and more energized, it brings my mood up and it just makes me, a, makes me a better person to be around, but also a better person um, for myself. When I wake up in the morning, I feel great. I look forward to, to moving. I look forward to um, having a nice healthy breakfast or lunch um, after my workouts and uh, it's seeing how it has improved my overall well-being mentally and physically. So uh, my passion for fitness is also um, very healing for me. I found that it helped me um, overcome a lot of anxiety and hurdles and it gives me the, the passion and the drive to also share that with other my other clients and help them realize that potential as well. We got married uh, in our late 20s. We, are just turned, we both just turned 27. Since we married so young, um, we weren't really looking at having kids right away. We did a lot of traveling. We were still doing our corporate jobs. I did a little bit of fitness on the side. He liked to work out as a hobby, so we were doing that for a while. I also decided to compete in a bikini fitness competition. So I did that for about a year. Got into appearance-wise what I felt like was the best shape of my life. That took a toll on my health because I stopped getting my period for about two and a half years. Um, I went to see some doctors, gynecologists, as well as alternative medicine. So I saw naturopathic doctors and Chinese medicine doctors. I had also been on birth control for a long time. So to coming off of that and then losing a lot of body fat in a short amount of time to compete really messed up my hormones. My body wasn't producing estrogen or, estrogen or progesterone as it should. So I was not um, getting my period. Uh, the doctor said I could still get pregnant, it could, I could still be ovulating, but I wouldn't know how to time it because there's no, no real signs telling me how I should be planning the family making part. So that was a little hard because um, we had no idea if I could get pregnant, if whatever we were doing was working. So that took about two and a half years to, to heal. Did some medical therapies as well as the alternative medicine therapies. Continued to keep my diet clean and and not drink a lot of alcohol and things like that. And then I went back to the gynecologist as well, just for a regular checkup and to also update her on what's been going on. She kept encouraging me to take the progesterone too because she said, you know, if you're not shedding a lining for that long, it can lead to other complications. It can lead to the cancer and things like that. So that obviously is not good. So I was like, fine, I'll just take the progesterone um, and it will make me, if it will make me get a period and that's great, at least I, Cover that, cover that base. And it did, my period came back. I took the progesterone pills for three months. The period came back for those three months. I started to stop again to see, and the period never came back after I stopped. So I waited a few more months and I said, okay, I'm just gonna take the progesterone again. And literally, and it's like kind of creepy, but like literally the day before I was about to pop the pill, I got my period. And it, that was like the first time in two and a half years. I felt like I was like 11 years old again. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. So, and then since then, um, it's been regular like on the dot and, and I got pregnant and then even after pregnancy when, my, when I got my period back after pregnancy up till now it's been very like on the dot like super predictable. I feel more in tune with my body now almost like I can, I can feel like the minute I'm supposed to get it the minute my cravings start all that kind of stuff. We were discussing now I think I'm we're on 33 at the time so we were like okay I think we should start trying and see because if there are any other complications we gotta figure it out. Um, and we always knew we wanted a kid. We didn't specify how many. I just always wanted to be a mother and I always wanted to experience um, the whole entire motherhood, like bearing the child, giving birth, raising the child. We did get a dog first, so that was a little practice and also kind of um, uh, taught me a little bit about the responsibility of being a parent. So we were going, we were going to try um, starting a family. At the same time, we still wanted to travel and we had a big trip booked for uh, Tanzania. We went to climb Kilimanjaro and I had that booked and I also booked additional insurance in case, well, if I get pregnant, then I can't go on this trip. So we booked extra travel insurance, but then I was like, you know what? If I get pregnant and can't go on this trip and do the climb, I might be very upset. 
So we decided to postpone that a little bit more until the trip was over, which is just a couple of months. And um, I think the mountains also helped us uh, get closer and also, you know, relieve stress. It was like an experience like no other. Once we got back from the trip, uh, I got pregnant. And the pregnancy, thankfully, was really um, was really great. I was able to keep up with my health and fitness. Um, any modifications, I was always honored as well. Um, and yeah, I couldn't have asked for anything more. It was it was a really good experience, and I'm glad it happened when it did. I have been active for more than 20, 25 years of my life. Luckily, I didn't have to modify too much. One thing I, I did stop doing was jogging because I immediately didn't feel comfortable um, jogging and bouncing around. So I was, I, I allowed myself to just kind of let that activity go for now. Um, but I continued with everything else. Um, the doctor gave me clearance, said it was okay. And I felt great. I also continued, a lot of people are very surprised about this, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm an avid indoor rock climber. So I kept up with my rock climbing. Um, and that didn't really take a backseat either, like my, my strength was still there. I just had to change the type of harness I was wearing. So I had like a whole pregnancy harness, like around the shoulders, space for the belly and stuff like that. Very, very fortunate to be able to stay active. And it's not just about being physically fit. It gave me that mental calmness too, just knowing that I'm able to move while I'm pregnant. It made me feel really, really good and um, relieved any sort of stress I might've had. And then closer to when Harley was due, I did, continue climbing, but I did a little less each time I went to the gym, just because I could feel the heaviness. So I, I just took more breaks, definitely honored what my body was telling me to do. And uh, if I needed a break that day, or if I needed to do something lighter that day, I, I did that, I didn't push myself at all. So I was lucky to have such a good pregnancy with uh, keeping up the activity, but I was also very happy that I was able to honor any modifications I needed to give myself and not, you know, let my that my ego get in the way or anything like that. So I didn't really like put my life on hold or not do things because I was pregnant unless it was blatantly dangerous. Um, so yeah, I think that that helped me navigate as well. So the experience I had while carrying my daughter um, outside of the physical aspect, I really tried to ground myself and take everything day by day. So I continued my life, which most of it was physical. So I was like, I'm not gonna stop exercising because of, because of any kind of fear or whatever, I'm not gonna stop. Um, going out with my friends, I'm not going to stop eating like certain foods unless it was proven to be unsafe. It seemed kind of seamless for us because even before she was born, me and my husband were like, we're still going to hike with her, we're going to get a hiking backpack. We were all prepared, we were like, she's going outside, we don't care. We're going to go camping, all that kind of stuff. So we already had it in our heads that we were going to do this with her. Nothing's going to stop us unless there was, you know, something out of our control. Everything that we try to do, if we have control over it, then we will try to make it work. We invested in a hiking carrier. It helped to see the type of baby that she was. Like, thankfully she got to sleep, so that was great. And she was sleeping in the hiking carrier, she didn't complain. And I think just being outside maybe helped her with her mood as well. Like she got to see all the colors, the trees, animals, fresh air. So as a baby, she seemed to enjoy being outside a lot. As she got a little bit bigger, she was able to walk. We we still carried her for as long as we could, as long as she could fit in the carrier. Um, but we also encouraged her to walk. And I think it also helps that she sees us doing a lot of the walking, doing a lot of the exercise. She sees us exercise at home. I've taken her rock climbing with me, even as a baby, she would just watch. So because she's seen it, it's not really that new or um, scary for her. I do want her to make mistakes and learn from them. And uh, I think that will go a long way. And I think with the physical activity, things that are hard, Things that she probably couldn't have do before, but now she can. I've seen that um, with her. She takes dance classes and gymnastics classes. There are things that she was afraid to do before, but now she's, I saw her do it in the last couple of weeks in gymnastics. And I was like, she's actually overcoming some fear. So yeah, I think that's kind of the way to go with her and, and it seems to be working so far. It took me a little while from when I became a mom till now, but I mentioned before that uh, I prioritize sleep. So whenever I can, if I can sleep in, I will sleep in instead of trying to drive myself out of bed at 6 a.m. to work out or whatever it is, or get things done before Harley wakes up. That was at first my goal. I wanted to do this and this and this before she wakes up, but if I need to sleep, I will sleep. And I find that's like the most important thing for me. If I don't get enough sleep, I find my anxiety levels are up and all that sort of stuff. So 
I've learned that that's what I need to do. I've also learned to ask for help. So if I need, you know, my mother-in-law to babysit, I will ask her to help me. It makes a big difference too now that Harley's in school. So I have some time during the day for myself. I can work a bit more, I can do stuff around the house. So um, I, I let go of any sort of like mom guilt I might have of like not spending time with her because I know she's thriving in school. She she loves going, but she also loves loves it when we go pick her up. So. That's also very rewarding, knowing that she misses us and she can't wait to come home type thing as well. How it feels watching her become from a little baby to a little person, and I might start to cry, <laughs> but um, it's, it's incredible. Like, it's, it's like nothing you've ever seen. It's like, she was this little baby and I get these memories on my phone from like four years ago and I'm like, oh my gosh, she was so small. And then now she's like, she's like a child. She's not a baby. Yeah, she's incredible. She like she had this little handprint mold thing that she made out of the summer camp last year. And she found it yesterday actually and she was like, Oh, and her hand is too big for it now. And like, you grew that much? Like it's it's insane. And and just looking at you know, I see teenagers walking down the street, I'm like, that's gonna be Harley one day. Like that is scary. <laughs> so it's exciting, but it's also scary. And um, definitely makes me emotional looking back at her baby pictures. Point blank, be realistic, and and really strengthen your mind first, and be able to talk to yourself and be real with yourself. So, being realistic with your expectations on how you want to um, approach your fitness now that you have a child, being realistic with how your schedule is going to be or not be because you have a baby now, and being realistic with Oh, your health overall, you need to make sure you're you're getting all your nutrients, you're drinking enough water. It's not the time to go on a diet. It's not the time to, you know, go from zero to 100 at the gym. It's not the time to fixate on trying to get eight hours of straight sleep right away. If you can, that's great. It's not impossible. But but allowing these, um, these surprises and twists to come daily because they will and just letting yourself adapt to the changes. Shifting your focus from, I need to get my body back because I just had a baby to, I just want to regain some strength back. I want to regain my energy back. And when you focus on taking care, taking care of yourself that way, making yourself feel better, then if you have the goal of losing weight, that will eventually come. But, uh, you know, again, just being realistic with what you can handle at the time and asking for help when you need and taking the rest that you need. Honor the changes that your body has gone through in order to produce this human, um, what it had to go through to give birth to it. Um, and realizing that your body has changed and that is not a bad thing. And it, whether you had the baby or not, your body will and does change as we get older, our environment and things like that. So it's definitely not impossible to regain the strength and all those things that you had before. Um, it's definitely not impossible to, you know, wear, fit into those pants again, or that dress or whatever it is that your, your goal is, but, um, you have to be patient, you have to be consistent and you have to, again, honor what your body and your mental state is that day and give yourself time to heal before, you know, jumping into things and setting yourself unreal unrealistic deadlines. Um, cause there is no urgency, like you have a child now, so you just do what you can and, and you just take it day by day and take care of yourself.